We all love motor sparing blocks for knee surgery, but what about the skin and the sub-Q fascia? Are we just supposed to ignore those parts? Of course not. We have a solution for that. Stay tuned to learn how to do these simple blocks and improve your knee patient's experience. What blocks do you do for total knee arthroplasty? If you said a Dr. Canal, then join the club. It's great for motor sparing pain relief of the knee, but there's a problem. It's also mostly skin sparing too. The saphenous nerve will get this portion of the incision over the inferior kneecap and patellar tendon, but what about the proximal part? That's innervated by the anterior femoral cutaneous nerves, or as we call them, the cuties. The skin of the distal anterior thigh is innervated by three principal nerves. The lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is a branch of the lumbar plexus and can be blocked separately by the inguinal crease. That leaves the intermediate femoral cutaneous nerves and the medial femoral cutaneous nerves. These branch early off the femoral nerve and the proximal thigh and travel down as far as the knee, supplying the skin along the way. The medial and intermediate are known together as the anterior femoral cutaneous nerves. Let's look a little deeper. The deep fascia of the thigh is called the fascia lata, and it encircles the thigh like a compression stocking. The cuties travel deep to the fascia lata for the first 10 centimeters or so, and then pierce through the fascia and then travel subcutaneously all the way down to the knee. Now you could block them in this proximal segment above the apex of the femoral triangle, but there are two disadvantages. One, the closer you get to the inguinal crease, the more likely some local will get to the motor branches of the femoral nerve. Not good. We're trying to get our patients to walk in the PACU. Also, when the nerves are deep to the fascia lata, they're a little bit harder to see. In contrast, when they're subcutaneous, they're easy to pick out from the surrounding fat. They look like cute little raspberries and therefore are easy to block. All right, cool, let's go. Actually, hold up. We need to say one more thing about the anatomy here. Some of you might be saying, yeah, big deal. How important is a cutaneous block after having had a knee reconstruction? For starters, lots of patients used to complain of sharp incisional pain before we started doing these, and that's no longer a thing. But perhaps more importantly, these cutaneous nerves also innervate the underlying fascia lata. That fascia encircles the thigh, but also attaches to and blends with the capsule of the knee, the femoral condyles, the tibia, and the sides of the patella. The fascia lata is involved in myofascial force transmission and load bearing, and is richly innervated around the knee. So these cuties are not just about the skin. They're also supplying a very, very important fascial layer that is integral to the knee, one which is surgically traumatized during knee replacement. Okay, so how do we block these? The easiest place to start is at the mid-thigh, halfway between the inguinal crease and the patella, which is great because that's where I'm doing my adductor canal block too. Here's a typical image of that location. You'll see sartorius muscle, the femoral artery deep to it, and the adductor longus and magnus muscles. Overlying the muscles is the fascia lata. We're going to be scanning lateral and medial looking for cutaneous nerves in the fat layer just above the fascia. Most of the time, you'll be able to find two to three branches roughly centered over the sartorius muscle. I'll start by going to the medial edge of sartorius. You'll want to see hyperechoic little raspberries maintaining their integrity as you slide proximal and distal. If it disappears, it likely wasn't a nerve. Hmm, not much there. That's okay. Let's start tracking laterally. Okay, now that looks like a cutie. Well, remember where that one was. And there's another one beside it two chunky raspberries just waiting to be blocked. For good measure, we'll head more lateral just to see if anything pops out. And yes, there's another smaller branch over the rectus femoris muscle. Now, that's probably a branch of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, but that's okay. It's easy enough to block, and as we'll see in a moment, it may contribute to the skin over the knee joint. Here's a very typical example showing three nerves. We can see two clustered together above sartorius. These will be the intermediate cutaneous nerves and then a third single nerve tucked into a fascial compartment at the medial edge of sartorius, which is the medial cutaneous nerve. You don't have to remember which ones are named which, just find the relevant cuties above and around sartorius and you'll be in good shape. Here's the block needle advancing in plane from the lateral side. Two to three mils of local anesthetic is all that's required for each nerve. There we have two blocked. And here's our third injection. You can use whatever local anesthetic you like, but because these are just sensory nerves, it makes sense to use something with long duration, like bupivacaine, with or without some adjuvants. Quarter percent bupivacaine gives you a dense cutaneous sensory block lasting about 20 hours. How do I know that? Well, let me tell you a story. I got curious one day about whether I could map out the sensory distribution of these nerves with nerve stimulation and feeling where the paresthesias were being felt. So I did that on myself. Here we see the needle being advanced to the most medial cutie we found. I could feel a little zapping sensation in a clear distribution and was able to mark it out with a marker. We then injected 3 mils of bupivacaine to block that nerve. We then withdrew the needle a bit and did the same sequence with the next cutie.
And then for good measure, we did one more cutie we found more laterally. And here's what we found in the end. On the left, we see the pattern of paresthesias that we evoked. Interestingly, the actual blocked area was larger and certainly included the skin over the entire kneecap. Note that there is good overlap between the nerve branches, which makes sense. And yep, I was totally numb for a solid 20 hours. And if a typical incision is like this, our cutie blocks would get most of that. Combine it with a saphenous block in the adductor canal and bingo, you have yourself the entire thing. There is no question in my mind that this provides great analgesic value for our total knee patients. And here are some anterior femoral cutaneous nerve block tips. First of all, these are super easy to pop in after your adductor canal block. You often don't even need a separate skin puncture, just a withdrawal of the needle and a redirection. Although sometimes to get the medial nerves, you will have to reinsert. Second, sometimes the nerves are in a small compartment just above the fascia lata and can be missed if you're looking more superficially. This is especially true for the medial one. I tell the residents to look for the eyeball sign. The shape of the fascia and the nerve look like an eyeball staring at you. Needle enters that little compartment and blocks the nerve. And lastly, there are also cases, although it's rare, when the nerves appear to divide early and the branches are multiple and too small to make out clearly. In these cases, I just infiltrate superficially above the fascia lata over top of the sartorius muscle. They say beauty is only skin deep, and these cuties are a beautiful and valuable addition to our set of knee blocks in order to keep patients happy and comfortable.